The 2012 to 2015 Jaguar XKR S. I have always liked the Jaguar XK. It is elegant and timeless. In fact, I would go as far as to say I appreciate the way the XK looks more than the F-Type. But comment below, let me know what you think in regard to the exterior. But in this video, I want to focus on the XKRS because it's that final hardcore model and I'm gonna go through some specs, some basic facts, and then talk about some more in-depth aspects in regard to the XKRS. And finally, we can conclude. The XKRS was introduced for the 2012 model year, came with a five liter supercharged V8 engine producing 542 brake horsepower and 502 pounds feet of torque. Now you can also get the XKR, a regular XKR, and that was honestly more than enough, especially for street driving, made 510 horsepower. But again, we're focusing on the S because it was that final send off. But this vehicle did zero to 60 in 4.2 seconds, had a top speed of 186 miles per hour. And this was mated to a six speed automatic transmission. Fuel economy was trash, like you would expect. 15 MPG in the city, 22 on the highway. Required premium fuel, of course. Had a coefficient of drag of 0.34. And this was certainly a very sizable machine. This was 188.7 inches long total. That's larger than most mid-size SUVs, honestly, and had a wheelbase of 108.3 inches. And it makes it a little bit more predictable to drive as well. So despite the high horsepower, despite it being rear wheel drive, you know, you can keep cars like this in check because of that longer wheelbase. Makes it a little bit more predictable to drive. You can catch the rear end and the high speed stability also improves due to the longer wheelbase. So that's why I personally like cars like this or in the modern day, right? The LC500 Lexus, things of that nature. And regarding the curb weight, the vehicle weighed just under 4,000 pounds, 3,968. So once again, that slightly higher curb weight, it's also gonna help with that stability as well, keeps the vehicle more planted. So it's not all just a detriment and Jaguar tends to do really well with suspension tuning. I remember I drove the XJ of this generation and it just blew me away. That was pretty much the best handling full-size luxury sedan I have ever tested in my entire life till this day. That is the best handling car, easily beats the 7 Series even. It just feels so nimble, it feels like nothing. So you can imagine how good a sports touring model like this XKR would feel. And I've driven things like the F-Types, I appreciate those cars, but once again, I just really love the looks of this. All right, enough of that. Let's go ahead and let's transition over into some interesting facts now. The XKRS is the most powerful and the fastest production vehicle that Jaguar had ever built for this time. Car had an active sports exhaust. We also had lightweight advanced aluminum body architecture. So that certainly helped in keeping the curb weight under 4,000 pounds. We have your bespoke suspension changes for the front and the rear that only the RS model gets unique styling in order to reduce lift and to maximize the aerodynamic stability. The interior is also revised for the XKRS with a 16-way adjustable memory sports seat with carbon fiber effect leather. And now let's go ahead and let's go into more detail in regards to some of these facts. Okay, so we know it has that monster 5 liter supercharged V8, you know, making this thing skedaddle to 60 in 4.2 seconds. The active performance exhaust crackles, pops, it's insane, it has so much character. We appreciate that about these vehicles. But the RS isn't just the quickest Jaguar, but it's also the most agile the most responsive and the most driver focused during this time. Since the vehicle utilized that lightweight aluminum platform, this allowed the Jaguar engineers to rework the suspension using bespoke components to increase the stiffness without destroying the Jaguar ride quality. Once again, that's what I appreciate about these types of sporty vehicles compared to just the hardcore track type cars. This is usable, still has decent ride quality so you can live with it on a daily basis. We have your reworked aluminum front suspension knuckle and a revised rear geometry that are aligned to stiffer springs and dampers. Car is rocking some lightweight forged alloy wheels and recalibrated steering. The car also sits approximately 10 millimeters lower than a regular XK or even an XKR. 
So that's why I really like the stance of this particular car. Aerodynamically, modifications had to be made to achieve the 186 mile per hour top speed. The way it was designed, the car has a requirement to channel the air cleanly over, around, and under the vehicle to maintain stability and to ensure balance downforce front and rear. There has been an overall reduction in lift of 26% compared to the other XK models. But this is the first XK to utilize a rear wing like this. Now let's transition over into talking about that engine because that is the heart of this car, right? So with this five liter supercharged V8, we have a twin vortex roots type supercharger. The car is of course direct injected and I did mention that 15 city 22 highway is pretty poor fuel economy but if the car actually does achieve 15 in the city that's not the worst thing in the world now that I think about it because I do remember my LC500 Lexus which is not supercharged just a naturally aspirated V8 would get around 15 in the city however it could get between 25 to 26 mpg out on the highway so definitely has this supercharged V8 beat on the highway. The city MPG is just going to suck in general with these V8 power plants. So one of the things that was done to make this as efficient as possible is introducing that direct injection. There's also an increase in the compression ratio from 9.1 to 9.5 and this helps to improve the fuel economy further while multiple injections reduce the warm-up phase to increase the catalyst efficiency and reduce emissions. But anyway, the Roots Type Twin Vortex Supercharger sits in between the V of the cylinders with its two intercoolers and apparently this new sixth generation force induction unit is 20 percent more thermodynamically efficient than its predecessor and the intercoolers feature their own water cooling circuit to reduce the temperature of the pressurized air to optimize power and efficiency. Now in terms of handling we have new aluminum front knuckle that increases the stiffness and we also have front and rear springs that were increased by 28 percent the 20 inch vulcan wheels are forged as i mentioned and they reduce unsprung mass by 4.8 kilograms and that is quite a lot big advantage over the other xk models indeed the stability control has been reconfigured and the car also makes use of the most high performance braking system that jaguar has to offer as standard and i just appreciate how jaguar keeps mentioning that despite this is their most hardcore vehicle they still wanted to maintain an excellent ride quality the double wishbone front suspension it was revised with that new aluminum steering knuckle that I mentioned and this increased camber and caster stiffness by 0.13 degrees per kilo newton to transform the accuracy and weighting of the steering for greater levels of connection, feedback, and precision. The active differential control was reprogrammed to reduce steering sensitivity at higher speeds. The rear suspension geometry has been revised with rear wheel steer optimized for maximum agility while spring rates have been increased at both ends of the car by 28%. Bespoke software for Jaguar's adaptive damping has been written for the XKRS and the upgraded brakes help to stop the XKRS 2.7% better than the XKR and the interior of course also got revised but the interior of most Jaguar products is what really turns me off from this brand and this company I mean this was that era of the cheap Ford plastics I mean the car felt clapped out when it was new and you know it's not just Jaguar I've noticed this with um a lot of the entry-level Mercedes products like the A-class C-class type vehicles uh, maybe they changed that for the brand new C-Class, but I've just noticed with the lower end Benz products as well, they're just so creaky and crunchy. And a lot of these Jaguar products, it is not pretty to witness them as they age. It's just not an attractive place to spend time. This is where the car kind of falls apart for me. But hey, if you're an owner of these cars, let us know in the comment section how the interior has held up for you. Let's go into some of the interesting aspects that are unique to the XKR S. We have new trim materials including ebony soft feel paint for the switches and gloss black finish for the center console. Yeah, that's the that's the nasty stuff right there. That gloss black finish gets scratched up, looks disgusting, especially in a freaking 10-year-old car, right? Because this car is now over a decade old. And the XKRS will also be exclusively available with a dark linear aluminum finish 
as an option to the wood veneers and I would rather have the aluminum finish. It's a little bit more sporty, right, than just having wood in an XKRS. We have here a new leather-wrapped multifunction steering wheel, and you have the new performance front seats that are 16-way adjustable, and it does come with memory as well as heating. And this was everything for the 2012 XKRS. As I mentioned, that was the first model year. In 2013, the XKRS in particular didn't really see any real changes. In 2014, this is where they introduced a very limited edition XKRS GT Coupe. Now, the reason why I didn't talk too much about this was because only 25 were made for the United States market. But just to let you know, this was a thing for the 2014 model year. And 2015, that was the last year of the Jaguar XK. And they did not produce that limited edition XKRS GT in 2015, but they did come out with another special final 50 limited edition model for the XK for its last model year in 2015. Now, if you wanna buy this car, I have noticed that there's literally only one XKRS for sale in the United States, and it's like $64,000 with around 28,000 miles on it. And I'm talking about clean ones here, not clapped out Jaguars, uh, and there's only two clean XKR models available. And of course, I'm talking about the model years between 2012 and 2015. So the latest and the cleanest Jaguars, if you want those, yeah, there's pretty much none available, sadly. But if you are an owner of this car, let us know your thoughts. Let us know how you like driving it, how it's held up for you. Is the reliability decent on these cars? I would like to hear your thoughts. And if you learned something new, please hit the like button and make sure to click the end screen here for the next video. And I will see you there.